WNEG-TV presents a special live interactive discussion on the Gulf oil spill. This program is sponsored in part by Heart EMC, Chick Music, Clyde Armory, and Golden Pantry Food Stores. Now, live from the WNEG-TV studios in Athens, Ray Matoyer and Dr. Samantha Joy. Good evening, I'm Ray Matoyer along with UGA Marine Scientist Dr. Samantha Joy and we want to welcome our viewers in Northeast Georgia and those of you who are around the world watching us on our live stream at Ustream. Dr. Joy, we want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. Thanks for having me. It's nice to be here. Now we just saw the show, the program that you guys put together while you were down there in the Gulf doing your research, but some things have happened since then. Get us up to date. What's been going on since you got back? What you've learned since you've come back? Well, we've been pretty busy. I think I've mainly talked on the phone to people, <laughs> um, but the people in my lab have been just incredible. They've worked so hard and we're, we've almost finished all the sample analyses. We're still waiting on the hydrocarbon data to come back, but that's being run by an outside lab and we're just, you know, we're waiting uh, for those to come in. But we've got just about all the other data together and I started looking at it yesterday and I'm hoping to have a paper written in a couple of weeks. So. Anything that you can give us a hint on what your data is telling you now? Well, you know, the story that we anticipated at, at the end of the cruise, the fact that, you know, there was a lot of gas in the water. We already, we made some of those measurements on the boat. We've, we've completed all the gas analyses now and the story, the data are very internally consistent. When we're in the plumes, we just see orders of magnitude more gas than when we get above or below or outside at a control site that hasn't been impacted by oil yet. Um, so th those data are, are pretty robust. Um, and what does that mean, more so gas in the water? The, one of the, these plumes, at first people were talking about them just in terms of, you know, oil under the seafloor. Oh, there's all this, this oil that isn't on the surface, this invisible oil that's, that's underneath the ocean. And we're, we're very concerned about that, but th there's another big part of what's coming out of this well, and that's gas. And that's something that's very poorly constrained up to, to right now. And I think we're just now beginning to get a good handle on how much gas is coming out of the, the well. And it turns out that uh, for every barrel of oil that comes out of, of the well, there's an equivalent of about half a, a, a barrel, if you will, in the same units of, of gas. So there's a lot of, th that just adds to the total hydrocarbon load of, of this, this spill. Um, so it's not just oil that's coming out, it's, it's gas. And the gas is not something that's gonna wash up on the beach. This is something that's gonna impact the, the water in the ocean. It's not gonna impact beaches. And of course, one of the things that's also happened this week is the oil tar balls that showed up on the uh, Pensacola beaches uh, on Wednesday. Uh, oil has been seen in western Florida before, but uh, this is the first time that it's been seen in the Pensacola area. There's some video of some of what they've been trying to remove from the beaches. What's your reaction to that? You know, it's, it's, it's sad, but it, there's so much oil in the water and it's, it's going to wash up eventually. The, the, the stuff that's washing up on the beaches, though, at least they can they can clean it off the beaches. It's, it's a horrible, horrible thing, um, but you can clean it up. It's just, it's, it's just time consuming and painful and, and awful for the people who live there to have to go through. Um, the, the, I worry a little bit more about the dispersed oil because that you can't clean up so much. It's, it's, it's in the water and it's going wherever the water goes and it's not so easy to track. In terms of this oil showing up in Pensacola, does it suggest anything to you about the movement of that oil in the Gulf? Well, the, the currents right now are, are pushing towards the, they're basically going to the north and then down the coast of Florida. That's the way the, the flows happen this time of year. What that means ultimately is that the oil is going to continue to get sort of pushed towards the Alabama, Florida, you know, and then and potentially towards the Florida Keys at some point. It all gonna, it's all going to depend on the position of the loop current and whether or not we get any strong, you know, tropical storms going through the region. That, that's really what's going to determine where the oil goes in the next couple of months is the storm tr field and how, it, how and, and where the storms travel. You know, if they form, whether they go to the north, uh, west or northeast of the, of the site. And of course they're predicting a fairly active season this year. Yeah, sadly. And I think there's a storm right now, a system that could develop into a tropical storm south of, of Cuba. So that's something that everybody's keeping their eyes on. Now, one of the other things that's happened uh, this week on Wednesday, BP also had trouble with one of its undersea robots uh, that hit the containment cap uh, that they've been working on. What's your reaction to that, where they had to actually reopen the cap before yeah, they could fix it again? It, you know, it's really unfortunate, but, it, you know, the good news is it was a day. It wasn't 10 days or 10 weeks. Um, it was a day with, with the cap having to come off. Um, 
you know, I, st I, I still wonder if there are other things that should be tried. A lot of people have been talking about, it sounds, it sounds a little strange, but this idea of putting an umbrella over the well to just sort of capture everything and then and, and suck the material out from un under the umbrella. I think that's something that we should really be seriously considering because, you know, most of what they have tried so far has not been, you know, very successful. They're pulling off, you know, 10 to 20 percent of the flow right now um, to the surface ships, but that means that, you know, there's still a big fraction getting into the, into the ocean, into the surface. And if there's anything that we can do at this point, you know, before the relief wells are in place, I think we should we should try it. So and a lot there. of a lot of experts, you know, a lot of petroleum engineers um, from the U.S. and internationally have suggested this idea of, of of like an umbrella or a little parachute cap over the well to try to, to contain more of the oil. Now we've got a picture of the uh, cap effort and the oil as it's spewing up from behind it. So obviously, you don't think the cap effort is a great idea. Well, it it certainly it it, it it helps, but it it's not it's not trapping, you know, as much of the hydrocarbons as we possibly could with another approach. And I think, you know, it's in place, it's, it's doing a partial job, but why not try something else in to capture the stuff that's, that's still getting past it. Now this, thousands, millions of people have been watching this video of the, the Gulf, uh, the oil coming up out of this well, even before the cap. When you look at this, what, is, what do you think about? What does it make you think about? When I look at it, I, I wish I was a better mathematician and modeler because I, I would really like to know what the flow rate coming out of that well is. And there are a lot of people who, who have, have who've calculated this number and tried to get it fine-tuned, but it's just, it's an ongoing impact. And, and I want to know, I want to know how much is coming out and I want to know where it's going. How much of it is subsurface, how much of it is in these plumes, how much of it is getting, you know, you know, to the beaches, etc. But really, what's the distribution? I still don't feel like we have it mapped very well you know, we know what's on the surface because it's easy to see that stuff with satellites. We don't know the distribution of these subsurface features very well at all. They're very poorly constrained. Now, also this week, there's been a uh, debate going on about the moratorium on whether there should be a moratorium on deep sea uh, underwater drilling. What is your thought on that? Well, you know, it's a, it's a really tricky subject. I know that in terms of the economics, it's really important for the Gulf region. But clearly, we don't have a strategy in place to deal with a deep water blowout. And until we have a good strategy in, in place, and until we're able to, to, to do something other than, you know, spend three months putting a relief well in and hoping and praying that that relief well works on the first try, I don't think this is something we should be doing because it's, it's too big of a risk and it's too big of a danger. And we need to, I think we need to have a, a much better system in place of checks and balances and, and oversight before, before any other additional wells are drilled or activated in the deep water. Okay, we've got a question that's coming in, an email question. Very simple question, kind of one of the things that you've been asking yourself is, where is the oil going? Surface, bottom, generally dispersed, where is it going? Well, I, I think the, the again, it's, it's not just the oil, it's the gas that matters too. But in terms of the oil, I don't think anybody right now could tell you how much of the oil is on the surface versus how much of it is in, in plume features or, you know, sedimenting to the bottom. I just don't think we have those numbers right now. Um, you know, a lot of people from BP argue that it's all on the surface, but, you know, clearly these plumes exist. They've been, they've been documented by multiple research groups and they, they exist. We don't, we don't have a good feel for how much oil is in the subsurface, but an even bigger issue is how much of that oil is, is, you know, getting part of the way to the surface and then coalescing and settling out to the bottom. And we need to, to do that, we need to go back out there with, with remotely operated vehicles and submersibles and map out, you know, look at the seafloor and see, you know, where, where the oil is. But we, you know, when you don't know how much is coming out to start with, it makes it really difficult to figure out where it's going. Another question from a caller who wants to know about the disbursement or the dispersant, I guess is what it's called, what they're putting into the water to disperse the oil. Yeah. What's your thought on that? Um, I personally think the dispersants are a bad idea. Um, you, can, you can go on, on my blog site, I have the, what's called the material safety data sheets for these dispersants. The, the two that are used most commonly out there are called Corex at 9500 and Corex at 9527. And if you read these, these data sheets, it sort of tells you a little bit about the toxicity of these compounds. And what you'll see is that um, for Corex at 9500, for example, that compound itself is more toxic than crude oil. So you could, you could harm an organism with a, small, with a smaller concentration of Corexit 
than crude oil. So if we're adding something to make this problem better that's actually more toxic than the crude oil itself, how can that possibly be a good thing? Yeah, it keeps more of the oil in the subsurface, so it, it's invisible and it floats around in the water for who knows how long. But it's not removing the problem, it's just putting it somewhere that you can't see it. And poison is not a cure. And po poison is not a cure. All right, we're going to come back in a moment. We've got more questions coming in. Don't forget, you can uh, uh, take your, uh, we're taking call in and email questions. You can also call us at 706 542 1331, email to news at wnegtv.com. And again, we're taking questions from our chat viewers to our Ustream feed. We'll be right back. 